Hi everybody. In this video, I would like to talk a little bit about Mary Devereaux's Beauty and Evil. So let me share the screen for with you. There we go. Okay. Mary Devereaux's philosopher at UC San Diego. And actually, I think that's a mistake. The University of Illinois, Chicago does not belong here. So disregard that. She's at uh, University of California, San Diego. That's right. So <clears throat> Liney Reifenstahl's documentary of the 1934 Nuremberg rally of the National Socialist Workers' Party, Triumph of the Will, is perhaps the most controversial film ever made. Devereaux will argue that it is the conjunction of beauty and evil that explains why the film is so disturbing. The masterful use of traditional narrative means, as much as its formal features, make the film an artistic achievement. Also, you, it uses the device of theme and characterization. There's uh, a lot of use of symbolism in the film, and the handling of point of view has been commented on as well. All of these devices are used to tell a story of the new Germany, military values, for instance, of loyalty, courage, unity, discipline, obedience, are combined with a heroic conception of German mythology. Pardon me. Hitler is the hero of a grand narrative, leader and savior. The tale of Hitler, stalwart, alone, heroic, is the tale of the German people. His will is their will. The film is troubling because it presents a beautiful vision of Hitler and the new Germany that is morally repugnant. The film is aimed not simply at stylistic innovations and formally beautiful images, but at using these to create a particular vision of Hitler and of National Socialism. Reifenstahl was a great admirer of Hitler, so this weakens her pure aestheticism defense. And this is the film she chose to make. So of Triumph of the Will. So Triumph of the Will is a work of Nazi propaganda. But the film is more than that. It is extremely well made, number one. Number two, it is a work of art. Uh, okay, sorry, typo there. It is a work of art. <laughs> it's extremely well made and it is a work of art. Yes, because it offers a beautiful, sensuous presentation, a vision in a recognized artistic genre, documentary, of a recognized artistic medium, film. Enjoying this film might lead one to ask not just what one, one may become, but about one, about, okay, sorry, let me start this again. Enjoying this film might lead one to ask not just what one may become, but about who one is now. Aesthetic distance has been the recommended way to look at art for most of the 20th century. Aesthetic distance relates to formalism, which means, if you'll recall, formalism is the view that the proper way to appreciate and understand art is through the lines and colors, not the representational content not the moralistic content uh, particularly, but, uh, well, at all. It's just to appreciate the painting itself without bringing anything to the painting about uh, historical context, artistic context, or anything like that. Okay. Um, it severs aesthetic evaluation uh, from moral evaluation. 
But formalism fails for triumph of the will. Distancing ourselves from the morally objectionable elements means distancing from the features that make it the work of art it is. And then Devereaux suggests the term sophisticated formalism, which tells us to judge not the message, but its expression, the expression of the message. So the idea here is Triumph of the Will is a film, expresses a message. It's not so much the message that makes the film morally bad. It is the expression. It's how that is expressed. But this makes it impossible to talk about political meaning while doing aesthetics. We would be aestheticizing content. So there's two ways to go. One is there's more to art than aesthetics would keep the boundaries of the aesthetic narrow and clearly defined. The category of the artistic would outstrip the category of aesthetics. Also, another way is to broaden the concept of the aesthetic beyond its traditional boundaries. The aesthetic would track the artistic, however broadly or narrowly. Devereaux recommends the second route. The first option keeps us focused on beauty as the most important feature, but this is old fashioned and no longer thought so important. It would marginalize much of modern art. The second option, that is broadening the concept of the aesthetics rather than uh, say there's more to art than aesthetics. The second option is more inclusive. We should have a richer conception of aesthetics in Devereaux's opinion. I hope this video has helped you understand this interesting article. If you have any questions about my presentation or anything else regarding this article or any other article uh, from the course, let me know. Um, have a nice day and bye-bye.